So we're back working on this Chevy Silverado 2500 HD with the 6.6 Dirty Max. We've got a new ECM here. That was fairly quick. It's unprogrammed, of course, so we're going to put it in and flash program it, and hopefully that's going to fix the no crank, no start condition. So as you can see, these are labeled J1, which would be X1 in the schematic, J2, X2, and J3, X3. You would think that number one connector would be one of the outside ones, like one, two, three, but hey, they hired the same Ford guy that labeled the connectors A, B, C on the Ford diagram, on the Ford ECMs. So there's the new ECM installed. I got a clean battery charger on it, set at 13 and a half volts. Now normally you would uh, leave the old ECM in so that it pulls the VIN, but there's no point because it won't communicate anyways. So hopefully when we turn the key on, we'll have communication at least. Well, that's a good sign. We got a check engine light. Let's see if we can communicate with this thing. I'm using GM's interface and we're going to flash program it. So we'll start service programming. And basically I've already uh, logged in to my account. I should have one flash. Uh, I don't want to update Java. So this installation takes several minutes and at some points it looks like nothing's happening so you just have to be patient and install and if you're an independent shop you have to basically do this every time you flash program at least that's what I found anyways um, GM no longer sells access to service programming for a year they sell it by, based on individual VINs so we'll pick up when this installation gets done okay so we got the software installed we're going to go and replace and program ECU now it's not going to be able to read the VIN and leave the vehicle battery fully charged yeah and we got to pick in Oh, Chevrolet 700 2015. It's a full size truck. Huh? Oh, picked the wrong one. Gotta pick Chevy 2015. Light duty truck, multi purpose vehicle. Silverado. So. Oh, now i got to update the firmware in my device. Well, let's do that. Seems like every time I do a flash programming event, there's always something that needs to be updated. Firmware, software. Did a Ford this morning. Tried three times. Called tech support. Turns out they've changed their system and my hardware doesn't meet their minimum standards anymore. So three hours later installing and, and transferring the license to a new laptop just to do that one. I still haven't finished that Ford. And now here just to update the firmware in this MDI saying 16 minutes. Okay, so it won't be able to communicate with the ECM. It should ask me to manually enter the VIN. Should. Yes. So I'll do that. Okay. Click on next. And we're going to go to ECM programming. Prepare module for removal programming. Next. making business like noises over there and next New calibration next download complete 
as I said I got a clean battery charger on it so we should be good we'll pick up when it gets to the end of this well this is always a tense moment watching this status bar go across here I've had them get two-thirds of the way and then get an error message let's hope this is going to be one of those days when that doesn't happen so we're about 60% of the way still going says so another minute and a half so the programming seems to have taken we're going to click on clear DTCs and I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of codes because this has got a DPF system modification and it's going to have to be retuned now to deal with that modification. I'm going to see if I've got uh, uh, an active subscription to GMMDS2. I'm not sure if my subscription is lapped or I'll put the snap-on scanner back on it. It's just doing a network code clear. Okay, let's cancel out of here. And close this. And let's see if... Oh, that's not what I wanted. That's the GDI manager. GDS2. Let's see if my subscription has lapsed. This is GM's current software. And my subscription's probably lapsed. You can buy a three-day subscription. Or you can buy this by the year. And one day remaining until lease expires. Okay, one day is enough. Uh, connect, read VIN. So this is GM's GDS2 software. Enter. Yeah, yeah. So I suspect there'll be some network fault codes, or not network fault codes, but fault codes related to the DPF system and possibly EGR uh, vehicle diagnostics DTC no let's go back system diagnostics no that's not what I wanted let's answer the phone okay so let's try this again module diagnostics engine control module ah, diagnostic trouble codes DTC display Hmm. Yeah, we got a few. EGT sensors. Immobilizer key not programmed. Oh. Yes, I'm going to have to do that. I'll have to go back into service programming for that. I also noticed the fuel injector calibration not programmed. So that's got to be in the setup as well. So we're going to try the immobilizer learn. At least we'll see if we can win programming. Where is the service information? Oh, another special application. Uh, engine control module. Learn engine control module and body control module. Engine control module, mobilizer, learn. That, I think, is what we need. Please wait. Turn the vehicle off. Do not start the engine. Okay, I haven't started the engine. Turn the vehicle to the run power mode. Oh, nice. 12 minutes now, not 10, like the old ones. Well, good thing I got a battery charger on it. So here is the information on programming the injector flow rates. If either of the ECM or the glow plug control modules are replaced or the fuel injectors are replaced, the flow rates have to be programmed. They're programmed in both the glow plug control module and the ECM. Now, normally we would have read that data from the ECM, but because the ECM was dead, we couldn't communicate with it, we couldn't read the data. So basically what it says to do, if you 
if both the glow plug control module and the ECM no longer have the flow rates, you're going to need the numbers off of each injector, which would not be very convenient. Uh, with the scan tool, enter the vehicle information, module setup, injector flow rate programming. So we're going to have to look for that in the GDS software. Once we get past this vehicle lockout, we're still locked out. I was doing some research while I was waiting 12 minutes and we're due down to two hours or two minutes and 42 seconds. We're coming down to the wire here. Let's see what it does. Please wait, it says. I did wait 12 minutes. Now you're making me wait more. Turn the key off and remove the key. Open and close the driver's door. Avoid turning on or operating any accessory radio headlights. Open and close the driver's door. Well, it is open. Okay, open and close the driver's door. Next. Please wait another 44 seconds. I must have think this is GM's way of increasing the billable hours. So let's see what it says this time. Please wait. Turn to the run mode. Please wait. Don't make me wait another 12 minutes. Turn it off and remove the key again. Oh my God. He is out. Cycle and close the driver's door. I swear to God they hired a Ford engineer for this. Next. Another 45 seconds. Okay, what's it going to do this time? Oh, come on, really? I used to think Ford was bad making you turn the key on, off, on, off. Says it's been completed successfully. Next. Check that it starts with each transponder key. Well, I would think the transponder keys are programmed into the BCM, but who knows? Okay, so we're going to cancel this. Finish this. Now we're going to go see if we can find the process to copy the fuel injector control, the fuel injector flow rates from the glow plug control module to the ECM. Uh, diagnosis. Uh, enter. Yes, take my eyes off the road. I've only used this GDS tube like a half a dozen times, so fuel injector control module. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Engine control module. Uh, con configuration reset functions. Injector flow rate programming. Copy injector flow identifiers from glow plug module to the ECM. That's what we want. I wonder if we can do that with the snap-on scan tool.
injector flow identifier continue I guess this is before and after so we've got a comparison okay uh, let's look at comparing them now hmm well let's clear the codes out of it DTCs, DTC display, clear DTCs. Okay. Okay. Okay, so all we got left with now is some exhaust gas temperature sensor circuits because they're obviously deleted, disconnected. Let's see if it starts. So, moment of truth. Well, that's a good sound. Now the fuel gauge is reading correctly, check engine light is on, DPF light is on. Exhaust fluid system message. So now you can take it and get it tuned to deal with all the uh, DPF modifications. Hopefully there's no more headaches with this thing. So just for the hell of it, I thought I'd check to see if the snap-on scan tool will do this. And I'm in the ECM, and in the module setup, copy injector flow rates to, G to glow plug control module, copy injector flow rates from to ECM, display ECM and injector flow rates. Let's see what it says. And it looks like they all match. I'm going to reset the oil life monitor because I see the change engine oil is on. There's no sticker on it. So I'm going to program it. Uh, current value. Oh, continue. Reset the other than. Let's put it at 50%. Edit. 50%. Save. Save. Was set it to 100%. There you go. It's got 48% oil life, so the light will be off. Took it for a road test. The truck runs fine, except for the check engine light on and the DPF problems. So we'll call this one fixed for now. Again, we don't know why the ECM failed. The general consensus is has something to do with tuning, but they always blame it on tuning. Thanks for watching.